Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video where I try to find out what happened to the side characters in the Arkham series. Again, if you haven't watched the previous ones, basically what I do is look at the characters who didn't get the proper closure they deserved, and if they don't have a canon ending, I'll try to make one up for them. And as always, if you think something else happened to a certain character, feel free to tell me in the comments. And without further ado, let's start with Man Bat and his wife, Kirk and Francine Langstrom. After you capture and cure Kirk, he gets locked up in a GCPD isolation chamber. However, he does eventually escape, as you can see if you turn your console or PC's date to October 31st. Also, if you return to Kirk's lab after completing a side mission, you'll notice that his wife's body is missing and there's a message written in blood saying, Forever my love. So presumably, Francine also turned into a bat creature and is out on the loose along with her husband. Though this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. At least from what we can see, Francine didn't go through the same experiment that Kirk went through. So I guess what we're supposed to assume happened is that she eventually somehow woke up from death and crawled over to the damaged bat DNA splicer machine and turned herself into She-Bat. I guess another possibility is that Kirk had somehow taken her body from the lab. Like I said before, he does eventually escape from the GCPD building, however this Forever My Love message can be seen while he's still incarcerated. If we're going under the assumption that she somehow turned into She-Bat, then obviously she's going to go and meet up with Kirk. And if that happens, that can mean a few things. Best case scenario, they're a monstrous version of Bonnie and Clyde. Worst case, they go and start reproducing, creating an army of mutated bat-human hybrid creatures. Come to think of it, that would be a cool idea for an Arkham sequel. Next up, let's talk about the Falcone family. Though they once were the seemingly unstoppable crime family in Gotham, after they were pushed out by all the bigger players, the Falcones are nothing but a shadow of their former selves. According to a riddle in City, the entire family had completely moved out of Gotham and fled to Bloodhaven by the events of that game. So presumably, they're keeping Nightwing busy at the moment. Though, if we look at the Nightwing story DLC at night, we see some of Penguin's guys operating in Bloodhaven, so it might be a matter of time before another gang war breaks out. Next up, let's talk about a very forgettable character, Bird. Remember Bird? Bane's right-hand man in Arkham Origins that only appeared in an easy-to-overlook side mission? What happened to him after that Christmas? My theory for him is that after Bane lost his mind, started getting addicted to Venom, and obsessing over killing Batman, Bird lost all respect for his boss. I mean, would you want to work for this guy? He's no longer the cool and calculated criminal he once was. He's now a lumbering monster. This could also explain what happened to Bane's gangs from Origins. Bird probably took over as their leader once Bane stopped caring about being a crime lord. Actually, what if Bird and Bane's gang left Gotham and returned to Santa Prisca? That would then mean that Bird would be killed by his former boss when Bane returned to clean up the country. So for our next guy, let's look at another very minor Arkham Origins character. Ricky Loose Lips LeBlanc. He's the guy that you interrogate multiple times throughout Arkham Origins and the Cold Cold Heart DLC. I think what most likely happened is that he was killed for being so easily intimidated. I mean, the guy's nickname is Loose Lips. However, I think it would be cool if the guy you interrogated in the GCPD building in City also turned out to be Ricky. It would make sense, Loose Lips is probably the thug who is the most terrified of Batman, and the thug in City is one of the only in the entire series to straight up surrender during a Predator encounter. Though, if he wasn't killed before this, he definitely was killed after. But honestly, I hope he's doing alright. And finally, let's end off with someone who we thought had a conclusive ending. So Talia al Ghul definitely died at the end of Arkham City, however she is the daughter of a guy who has come back to life hundreds of times. And in Raish's Mission and Night, you can see an empty body freezer in the morgue with her name on it, implying that she is still alive. So, what is she up to? Well, depending on what ending you choose for that mission, I could see it going one of two ways. If you decide to revive Raish and get Nyssa killed, I could see Talia taking over the rebellion for her and getting revenge for her sister. If you decide to destroy the Lazarus machine and get Raish killed, I could see Talia leading the Loyalists and getting revenge for her father. I just think that Talia would be mad at the person responsible for killing one of her family members. And I think that will do it for this video. Thanks again for the massive support on the previous ones and thank you for watching. And remember to like it if you liked it, subscribe if you really liked it, and I'll see you next time.